Well, that was interesting. James Langford, I'm uh, downstairs in the Capitol uh, after the State of the Union, just still thinking through the hour-long speech that uh, President Biden just gave. Thought I'd give just a quick response to some of the things that I heard there as I walked through the speech. If you got a chance to be able to hear it, I'd be interested in your posts and your thoughts on the speech tonight, uh, not just on the delivery, but on the content. Uh, the biggest issues that I saw as we were going through the speech, I was kind of flowing through the argument, obviously, that we're going to stand with the people of Ukraine. Good. We should stand with the people of Ukraine. It was great that the loudest, longest applause uh, through the entire speech was actually right at the beginning for the ambassador from Ukraine uh, to be able to tell the world that we are standing with the people of Ukraine and we should be standing with them for a humanitarian, re uh, supporting them, cutting off uh, Russia and isolating them from the world's economy. We should do what it takes to be able to make it very, very clear to Russia that the world will not put up with their aggression and continue to be clear on that. So it was pleased to be able to see that he actually started with that. But the, kind of the speech went downhill from there, to be able to say the least. It then started talking about that they were going to save oil prices and try to bring down the cost of energy in America by releasing 60 million barrels of oil worldwide. That seems like a big number, except for the United States alone uses 20 million barrels of oil a day. So that 60 million barrels worldwide they've coordinated equals three days in the world or less, three days in America or less than one day of actually world consumption. And that's actually got to be replaced. That's our strategic oil reserve. What we really need to do and what you wouldn't talk about tonight is actually put pressure on Russia by increasing uh, Oklahoma and America oil and gas production to be able to send to Europe. If you want to be able to really hurt Russia long term, you've got to be able to cut off their customers. Uh, but his focus was really on doing a short term patch literally for three days in America rather than actually do the long term issues that need to be done to really provide energy security. His whole focus uh, skipped over the fact that the United States is still buying oil from Russia right now. So we need to cut off purchasing from Russia. We need to actually replace Russia's uh, customers around the world so that we can prevent Putin from having the money to be able to murder his neighbors. That's the real piece that we need to be able to do. And for whatever reason, President Biden wouldn't talk about that, whether it's just, just beholden to environmental activists. And so he wouldn't talk about how we need to produce oil and gas. But that is the most obvious issue that everyone sees that he skipped over. He talked about the American Rescue Plan and then talked about inflation right after that, which I thought was interesting because the American Rescue Plan is what directly led to the inflation that we're facing today. He talked about inflation and he said this was all because of COVID, basically. But what he conveniently left out is this is not the kind of inflation that they have in Australia or in Japan or in South Korea or in Canada or in multiple countries around the world that are Western economies. They're not experiencing seven and a half percent inflation because they didn't do a plan like what Biden put in place last year, where he talked about all these quote unquote great things out of the American Rescue Plan. Inflation is the biggest issue. His response to inflation was we'll just cut the cost of products. We'll just make products cheaper and just declare to be cheaper. That's not how it really works in a real free market economy. And the conversation, all the senators declare prices are going to suddenly. So I it was interesting just to be able to hear that piece of it there. Uh, he talked about he's going to cut prices on certain products, but he also he's going to dramatically raise the price uh, for corporations and for their taxes. Uh, corporations make their money by selling products. So if you dramatically raise taxes on corporations, they actually then raise prices for products. And that continues to be able to accelerate inflation even more. So I don't know how that's going to act. Um, it was interesting conversation about crime in America was really honoring some police officers that obviously we all grieve with those families. But the answer that he had for that was more gun control, uh, that we're going to have a dramatically larger amount of gun control. And he started listing off all the other areas where he's going to cut that off. Uh, and clearly it's a Second Amendment issue that we're going to clearly push back against on this. He mentioned this Freedom to Vote Act and said we need to have a Freedom to Vote Act and then just got off of it in a hurry, leaving out that that really federalizes elections and takes it over from every single state uh, and says to states like Oklahoma, we can no longer have voter ID. We've got to be able to have uh, this ballot harvesting processes that you can't verify elections. So we talked about verifying elections and then immediately went to a bill and just declared it not mentioning to everybody, that actually makes it much harder uh, to be able to verify elections if you do that. It was interesting, with the Supreme Court sitting right in front of him, uh, he said that Roe v. Wade is under attack and looks right at the Supreme Court on that while they're in the process of actually debating this issue. I would tell you for the Supreme Court, they need the latitude to be able to make this decision based on the law, not the president trying to be able to bully them during the State of the Union address. Uh, he talked about um, border security. 
Wow, that's all I could say. While I was sitting there listening, knowing what they've actually done on border security, he starts talking about technology and how they're going to stop people from illegally crossing these different cases. I was just in Brownsville just a few weeks ago. I saw the courtrooms that he was talking about. Those courtrooms he was talking about were empty the day I was there, like zero people in them. 50,000 people had illegally crossed that border just last month. They had three different hearings in that. So while he talks about we're going to do these courtrooms and we're going to have these judges, I've seen it firsthand. They're not actually doing hearings there. And he can talk a big game about what's actually happening. They're not really enforcing it. So that was literally not true when he talked to that whole section on border security. Uh, and it was surprising just because every American knows we had 2 million people illegally cross the border last year. And then he can, has the audacity to stand there and talk about how we're going to have strong border security on that. That's pretty audacious, uh, to say the least. Uh, and then he then switches over to the unity agreement there, uh, talking about uh, the opioid epidemic. May I remind the president, opioids are coming across the border largely from Mexico, being smuggled across the border because the border is not secure. If the president wants to deal with the opioid e epidemic, I'm all in. I want to be able to help that in every area, including recovery, all the things that need to be done to be able to help Americans that are addicted to opioids. But we should begin by securing our southern border. That's the entry point for those opioids actually coming across. So that's number one. Uh, he talked through some of the mental health issues and he talked about social media companies. He got loud applause from both sides of the aisle when he talked about holding social media companies accountable, which we've got to do in his Department of Justice that's so focused on attacking parents right now uh, for standing up in school board meetings. His Department of Justice has the authority right now to deal with antitrust issues in social media companies, but he's so far not taken that on. And so that's the key thing that they can take on. But I'm glad to hear him say that, that we should deal with that. Uh, he then talked about uh, care for veterans. It was the only, uh, in the entire time is when he talked about uh, care for veterans and the burn pits. Uh, I understand completely on the burn pit issue and what needs to be done to be able to take care of our veterans. And we've got to be able to stand by uh, our veterans. But I was surprised that while he's talking about Afghanistan at that moment, he didn't talk about the 13 people that died in the pullout and to be able to honor those individuals. And he certainly didn't talk about the chaos that's still left in Afghanistan right now. And then finally, he ended with ending cancer. I don't know of anyone that's opposed to us ending cancer. We continue to do investments in cancer. What was interesting and what some people may not pick up is he announced a new agency that he wants to create. He called it ARPA-H. Uh, to be able to do advanced research uh, on health issues. We already have an agency called the National Institute for Health, NIH. That's their job. So all the things he outlined, saying we're going to do this with a new agency called ARPA-H, already exists in an entity called the National Institute for Health. They have Alzheimer's, they have diabetes, they have cancer there. So either he's saying we're going to abolish the NIH, or he's saying we're going to try to create a new agency uh, to be able to do uh, health research, or I, I, I don't know, maybe he's just going to change the name of the National Institute for Health. I mean, couldn't figure out what the process was and, and where he's actually headed on that. Let's definitely work to be able to end cancer. Let's continue the research that's been going on for decades where we've made good progress. We're much better at treating cancer now than we were 10 years ago. I pray that we're much better 10 years in the future on that. But I'm not sure creating a new agency actually solves cancer. We've got to be able to continue to advance research in areas that's really making progress to be able to do that, allow doctors to be doctors, to practice medicine, and to be able to innovate. That's the key issue that we've got to be able to deal with in the days ahead. I'll be interested in your feedback. Uh, all the comments are coming so quickly, I can't get a chance to be able to read all of them now. But I'll be interested to be able to see your thoughts on the State of the Union address itself. I would say there's a lot of major concerns about uh, the, the speech and the proposals that he's put out and the trillions of dollars in new spending. And as I mentioned before, one of the really audacious parts was his declaration that he's going to do border security now after he's not done border security for a full year and everyone knows it. The other big one was he said he's going to now also uh, cut the deficit in half and he'll be the only president that's ever cut the deficit by a trillion dollars in his first year which again, I just laughed because I thought that's because of COVID last year and all the spending on COVID that we actually worked to be able to keep him from doing even more spending last year. He did two trillion early in the year that caused all the inflation. He wanted to do four trillion on top of that, that we blocked him. We blocked him from actually spending four trillion more. And then he came and bragged and said that he actually cut the deficit by a trillion dollars. That's pretty remarkable uh, to be able to be that bold in that process. 
on something that's just factually not true and quite frankly something he fought hard to be able to get more spending and now he's taking credit to say no actually i was trying to cut the deficit on it anyway we're going to continue to be able to do the work i do encourage you to be able to pray for the president pray for the people of ukraine pray for what's happening in washington dc like we do for the nation as well we have strong disagreements in many of these areas we have some areas like standing with ukraine working on cancer and some of those where we have strong agreements on but let's as a nation continue to be able to pray for each other and to know that we are all fellow Americans, but we've got work to be able to do to be able to solve the issues that we face right now. So God bless you. Look forward to getting a chance to be able to follow through and read your comments in the days ahead.